Hey guys, welcome to another episode of A Shot of Ruby. Uh, my name is Zach and uh, I'll be taking you through uh, optimizing the mobile site today. So in the previous episode, we've established that we're downloading way too much data over the mobile, right? So we can trim all that fat. And in this episode, I'm gonna be showing you how to do all of that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to stop our controller from rendering the entire layout. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. So I'm gonna add this piece of code over here. Uh, we're gonna respond with the post and we're gonna have this layout and we're gonna render false. Now here's the thing, if we just render false on every uh, request, what that means is uh, even when the browser version of the, the, when the browser is making the request, it's not gonna render layout. So we need some sort of logic to handle um, the lay, you know, to choose whether to render the layout or not. And we do that based on whether this request is coming from a mobile or a browser. And if it's coming from a mobile, then we don't render the layout. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna uh, add a bit of code to help us determine if we need to render uh, the layout or not. So I'm gonna call this method render layout question mark, right? So um, it's gonna basically decide whether we're gonna render the layout or not. And it's very simple. It's just gonna check if our variant is uh, equivalent to our phone, then we're gonna return false. Otherwise, we're just gonna return true. Very easy, very simple. So we're gonna use this method to help us determine. So I'm gonna go back to that previous code where I've hard-coded false, put that in. And uh, to get respond with to work, I'm gonna to have to do a respond to up here. All right, so those are the two formats I wanna to respond to. Uh, and that's basically all we need to do to get the, you know, the control to not render the layout. So let's try this out. I'm gonna head over to the browser. So I'm just gonna do a quick reload over here and hit. So let's take a look at the re response now. It's much, much more concise. We're just getting the nav bar and the page and everything's working great. But here's the thing. Now, what happens if I get a URL, uh, let's say like, for example, you know, I, I share this post with someone online and the URL is something like post one, something like that, right? This is what we get when we share on Twitter or whatever, wherever it is. This is what gets hit when we go to the page, right? Now, if I just type this in and hit enter, you're gonna see something happen over here. Our mobile site is now gone. Like it just does not work anymore. So. I'm gonna show you how to fix that. This is what I was talking about in the previous episode where we're gonna break a few things and we just go ahead and do a simple, um, you know, render layout false. There's actually a few things we need to do uh, to resolve all these problems that we're having now. Uh, one of those things is right now, the root page is, uh, is just the post page, right? And when we hit that page, everything is fine because the, the whole layout is rendering. Um, the reason why it broke is because when we don't render the layout, the JavaScript, the CSS, and all that stuff that makes the mobile site works doesn't get rendered into the page. So what we need to kind of do is we need to have a page which is not this index page. So maybe kind of like an empty home page where you might want to put the uh, like a logo, like the, what we did with Codemy is we have a home page where we put the logo um, you know, kind of like a splash page and then the, the user can hit here and then go to the all posts. Another thing we need to do is when we go here, um, we need to kind of uh, have like a, a push state so that, you know, the, the URL changes when we change the page, um, you know, so that we can have a, like there's a difference between the actual mobile version of the URL and, uh, you know, the, the browser version, right? So, Framework 7 comes with uh, a push state option. So let's go ahead and enable that. So I'm gonna go to my setup file. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do push state true. Right. That's all I need to do. Um, now let's go ahead and see what happens when we do that. So I'm gonna go back over here, hit reload and hit that. And you can see that um, Framework 7 gives us this nice URL, right? And if I copy this and I paste it, 
What's going to happen is it's going to launch the page normally. It's going to go to the root page. The layout is going to be rendered. And then it's going to do the subsequent request to load this particular page. So that works, right? But then now, again, I mean, it still doesn't work slash post slash one. So what we really need to do is we need to um, detect that when we hit this URL with a phone, we need to redirect it to be something like, you know, what Framework 7 works with. So post slash one. So if we do that, it works just fine. So we need to detect that if this request is coming from a phone um, and it looks like this, we need to make it look like this, right? So how do we do that? Well, let's take a look. So I'm going to head over into my application controller. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to paste in a bit of code. All right. So basically we have these two methods here. Let's see the first one, ensure mobile. So if we're uh, coming from a phone device, uh, like a mobile device, we check that the variant is uh, equivalent to a phone. And then we check this request headers uh, does not equal star uh, slash uh, star. Uh, so where am I getting this from? So to understand this part of the code, let's take a look at what the request header looks like uh, in, in a request, right? So I'm going to do a puts request headers except like this uh, in both index and in the show method. And what I'm going to do is let's uh, let's just try and uh, make a request and see what happens. So I'm going to reload over here and you'll see that over here we have this um, text HTML application, blah, blah, blah. So basically what we need to do is we need to separate whether the request is coming from the mobile browser. So basically the Safari mobile Safari or is it coming as an Ajax request from the framework seven framework, right? So let's take a look at what happens when we go into the, when we tap one of these uh, links. So I tap that and then I go into the terminal and you'll see that when a request is being made uh, in an Ajax manner from Framework 7, this is what that request header looks like. So what we're saying in our code is if we're rendering the mobile and the request is not a star high slash star. So basically the request is not coming from framework seven is not an Ajax request. It's just coming from the mobile Safari. Then we're going to do the redirect, right? Then we're going to call this redirect because otherwise if framework seven makes a request and we don't separate it out like this, even the Ajax request is going to get redirected and we're not going to go anywhere. It's just going to be stuck in an infinite loop. I know that was a little bit confusing, um, but you know, just go back and watch the video once again. And I think you will understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, if you have any questions about this, just drop them in the comments below. Um, yeah. So let, let's just move on. If ensure mobile, ensure mobile is probably a bad, um, name for the method. Uh, you guys can change it if you want. Uh, I think you guys understand uh, it enough now that you can probably come up with your own method names. So um, this should get us uh, almost there. Uh, one thing we need to do now is uh, we need to basically um, implement that mobile redirect path, right? And how do we do that? Well, um, I'm assuming that every controller is going to have some a different path that you want to redirect to. So I'm going to just do something like this here. So for the index, uh, when we hit the index page, uh, we're going to redirect to the post path. And uh, if we're going to the show page, we're going to do post path and then uh, with the ID, right? Uh, this is pretty standard stuff. So why do we need to do this? Because uh, I'm actually going to use a different root page now. I'm not going to use the index page as a root page anymore. Um, so I'm just going to go back over here and I'm going to do a reload. So we're going to get this issue here if we don't have a different root page because Every time it's hitting the controller because with the before filter is over here. One thing we could do is accept um, index. Yeah, so we could do something like that and uh, this will basically work. And then here we have that and then I can I can now go and try this out. Suppose slash one. 
and you can see that it works, right? Um, but then the thing is, what if I share the post index page? You know, if I go here, what happens? Uh, I guess it works too, but then, uh, yeah, I guess, yeah. I mean, in my original implementation, I, I created a new home page, but in this case, I guess we could just ignore um, the index page, you know, in our redirect and uh, just do it for the show page. But I mean, if you want, uh, a, a, I think a truly clean implementation, I would create a new page, which is a root page and just use that. But I guess this works. Uh, so we can just go with this. Um, there's, I don't see any problem with it. So that is pretty much, you know, all we need to do. Now we have a solution that works. So if I go over here, post slash one, I hit that, it works great, right? Now there's one little thing, like these requests are Ajax requests. Now over here, it's fast, right? It's super fast because it's local. Like, you know, everything is happening locally. But when you're working over the network, you might want to show your user that the page is loading. So you might want to put like a spinning wheel or of some sort or whatever. And framework seven comes built in with that. So as a bonus, I'm going to show you um, how to put all that in here. So I'm going to uh, just paste some code into the JavaScript. So I'm going to go head back to my editor and I'm going to go into the setup. And over here, I'm just going to paste in this bit of code. Uh, so framework seven comes with these two events on Ajax start. Um, we can use the, you know, show indicator, uh, show indicator function, uh, from the, from the, our app. So again, and then on Ajax complete, it just hides indicator. So pretty simple, um, and straightforward really not nothing much to it for me to explain. Um, you can read about this in the documentation, uh, and, uh, you know, you can just get all that stuff from there. So I'm going to let, let's go back and I'm going to do a reload over here and you can see it for like very briefly there, very quickly. You can see that spinning wheel and on the mobile, when you actually have some latency, this is going to work out really nicely, right? So that's pretty much it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, if you like this episode, please like it, please share it with your friends. And if you dislike it, let me know why you dislike it, how I can improve. And, uh, you know, I'm going to try and do better. So yeah, that's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for tuning in. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. I also wanted to add that I've uh, put up the pull request so you guys can see the difference between this episode, what I've done in this episode and the previous episode. So you can go and see all the file changes um, right there, just like I did in the previous episode. So check that out. I'm going to post a link to this in the description below. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you very much.